In this part of the tutorial, we are going to be developing the service class. In Angular, a service is basically an injectable class that defines common data or methods that can be shared across components. In the case of this tutorial, we are going to define the methods that sends the various HTTP requests to the server in this service class. So I'll just go ahead and use Angular command line tools to create a new service. So in the integrated terminal here, I'll just type ng g service to generate a service and I would like to have that in a folder called shared service. And I will just give it the name user. By so doing, Angular will generate a service called user service. So as you can see here, a folder called shared service has been generated and inside there we have this service class which is injectable. Now whenever we define a service, we need to add it to the app module.ts file as a provider. So we need to import the service class here. So import user service from shared service and user service. And we add it here as a provider. So the service is going to be making use of HTTP to send the various requests to the server. We first of all need to import the Angular HTTP module here. So import HTTP module from Angular HTTP, this one. And we also need to add it here as an import. So back in the service class here, I'll start by importing the following HTTP response headers, all of this from Angular HTTP. And I would like to start by defining a base URL. So private base URL, which is of type string. And now assign it HTTP localhost 8080 forward slash API. So this is because our backend is running on port 8080 and we define here a request mapping of API, meaning any request that we are sending to this backend must start with API users if we want to return all the users and so on. So with that done, I would also like to go ahead and define the headers that specify the kind of data that we are going to communicate with the backend. So private headers, new headers. And inside here, we specify the kind of data we are going to be dealing with. So content type, will be application JSON. And we need to send this in a request option. So we also need to import that here. So private options, new request options. And here we pass in the headers we just defined. So with this done, we can then inject HTTP and start defining the various method. So inside here, I will inject the HTTP like this, private HTTP of type HTTP. 
So the very first method will return all the users from our backend. That means it is going to be sending this request to the backend. That will be a get request. So I'll call the method get users. And it is going to return this dot http dot get and inside here we'll pass in the base url and we also need to attach to it this users this one here and also the options so this returns an observable and one of the good thing about observables is that we can always add operators to it to increase functionality. In this case, I'll be adding the map operator to convert the response we get into JSON format. In order to do that, we need to import the map operator from RxJx. So import RxJx add operator map. And here I will do dot map and convert the response, which is of type response, to JSON. So response dot JSON. So this also throws an error, which we also need to cache it. And in order to do that, we also need to import the cache operator here. So cache. This will be dot cache. And this takes a method. So I'll just declare here a custom method. I'll call it error handler. And we need to define this method. So error handler, it takes in an error of type response. And this method needs to throw an observable exception. So in order to do that, we also need to import here through from observable observable this should be true and we also need to import here observable from rxgx observable And here we return observable the true that will be the error or the saver error and I spelled this also wrongly let me fix that so let's define the next method, which will return just one user from the backend based on the user ID. So I'll just copy this and paste it here. And I'll call this get user. It will take in an ID of time number. It will also be a get request, but this time around, we need to pass in also the ID as a part parameter. So I'll just do a plus ID and the rest will basically remain the same. So with that done, I'll do a method that deletes one user from the backend. So I'll just copy this here again and paste it here. And I'll change this to delete user. It also takes in the user ID and this will be a delete request. So next, I'll do a method that creates a new user. So I'll just copy this once more 
and paste it here and I'll change this to create user this will take in a user so we need to import the user class that we earlier defined so import user from we need to go up one level user this one and back inside this method we pass in the user we want to create so user of type user and this will be a post request and we pass in the user in the body as json so here i'll do json dot stringify user next we do the method that updates the user so again i'll copy this and paste it here and change the name to update user all we need to change here is to set this to put in the next video we are going to inject this service class into the list component and see whether we can get all the users from the back end so until then see you